You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Reclaiming Your Sacred Path with your host, John Anastasio. Author, educator, and healing practitioner, John Anastasio is here to share a process for choosing your own spiritual direction, obtain guidance directly from spirit, focus and direct energy, and walk your life path with integrity. So now, please welcome the host of Reclaiming Your Sacred Path, John Anastasio. Welcome to Reclaiming Your Sacred Path. We're here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio for another hour of conversation about growth and the human spirit. I'm your host, John Anastasio, and I want to thank you for being here with me today. And um, today is quite a special day in the pagan community on the pagan calendar. It's Beltane, uh, which is here in the Northern Hemisphere, it's Beltane. Uh, This is one of the two times in the calendar that... Uh, The other being Samhain, or uh, popularly Halloween, uh, which is what it is today in the Southern Hemisphere. So happy Samhain to those of you who may be listening below the equator here. Um, But these are the two times that we believe that the veil is thin between this world and uh, the other worlds of spirit. And it's a good time for divination. Uh, It's a good time for devotion and connecting with deity, and it's a good time for connecting with each other. Uh, You know, Beltane is about rebirth. And a lot of people are having picnics and bonfires and getting together and dancing around maypoles and very, very festive day. You know, it's that time of year when the sun is strengthening and the woods and the fields are, are greening and the energy is all about fertility and growth. And, you know, that puts me into a theme. This theme of rebirth is uh, is really important uh, in reclaiming your sacred path. There are a lot of rites of passage that we have in the world. You know, in all the different cultures of the world, and they all they each of them creates a form of rebirth. You know, any initiation that you go through really kind of provides a fresh start. Uh, most spiritual disciplines have levels many of them three levels, some more. Uh, And each of those levels is complete when you are initiated or when you have an acknowledgement that you have completed that that level and you essentially are initiated into the next level, you're reborn into the next level. Um, And the thing about that is that each of those initiations introduces us to the universe as a changed being. Changed, but not new. You know, if you think of the tarot cards, right, the, the card zero in the major arcana of the tarot is the fool stepping off a cliff in perfect love and perfect trust that the universe will have his, his or her back or feet, as it were. Um, with, with each of these new beginnings, we're building on what we have learned in the passages we've been through before it. You know, our experiences shape us and they change our capability. Every experience changes our ability to learn and to grow, increases it, enhances it, which is why your sacred path is only your sacred path. Your path leads to the same place as all other paths. We're all headed home from a spiritual perspective, but the route you take is determined by your past experience because that's the lessons that you have learned. And we all trust our own experience more than we trust the words of others, which is why spiritual paths are fundamentally experiential paths. So at Beltane, we have, we're here in a new springtime, but, you know, with thinking about this rebirth idea, you know, the trees don't start over every spring, right? They add a ring. And so do we. There's a layer of experience and growth that we are 
putting on as we move forward now into this late half of the year. So when we arrive at Beltane, when we arrive here uh, this year, 2018, or whatever calendar you're following, we haven't come full circle because that would be putting us back at our starting point. We don't do that. What we have come to is we've reached the same compass point in our spiral of growth. So the spring is associated with the east, with beginnings, with air. And so that's the point we're at. But we're not where we were last year. We have grown. And so our, you know, our life experiences, like I said, they, they shape us. And when you envision and follow your own sacred path, it allows you to do the to to find the best growth for you, the best growth experiences for you. And, you know, kind of like a bonsai expert trims in just the right places, allowing for the best growth for the tree. You learn in the right places. You learn the right things to allow you to walk your path. You know, we may look at our lives sometimes and see what's missing and, you know, maybe what we think has passed us by or what we haven't accomplished. But today is a day to really look at, look behind you at all that you have achieved what all that you've been through has taught you and the blessings that you have in the learning and the growth that you have accomplished, including how the seeds of the effort you've planted in the past year are now beginning to sprout. There, it's Your life is greening now. You're becoming because of the energy and the care and the love that you have put into all of the things that you have done. So, you know, there was a a guy a few years ago named Jerry Mander who wrote a book called In the Absence of the Sacred about what happens when our frontal lobes get ahead of our hearts and souls. And tonight's show, you know, I really would love to call the present in the presence of the sacred because our guest tonight is uh, really an extraordinary person and um, she is the leader of an extraordinary organization. Um, and what I mean by in the presence of the sacred is that the sacred is all around us at this time. It always is, but it's particularly close at this time and within each of us. And we've got the capacity to see the opportunity in that and to bring our highest selves to bear as we embrace the shadow that we have to face and bring that shadow to the light. So this past weekend, I had an extraordinary experience. Uh, I had a lot of extraordinary experiences this weekend, but uh, they were all contained within uh, an event called the Corellian Lustration in North Carolina, which is a weekend event of my tradition, which includes a ton of fellowship and connecting with each other and meeting new people and also an annual ritual that is called the Lustration of the Ancestors. And a lustration is a blessing. It's a purification, uh, a purification with light through water blessed with that light. And it's a ritual in honor of the ancestors, and it was deeply, deeply meaningful, especially with the full moon time frame we were in and the season of Beltane here. And we were joined by a couple of guests, uh, and one of them is with us, well, we're joined by a number of guests. One of them is with us here tonight. And I am really so honored to have um, Lady Belladonna Laveau, Archpriestess of the Aquarian Tabernacle Church, which is headquartered here in Index, Washington. And it is uh, it is an extraordinary organization. You're going to hear about it uh, as we talk tonight. And the website, if you want to glance at it, if you happen to be uh, in a position to do so, is atcwicca, W-I-C-C-A dot org. Uh, and if you light that up right now, you will see actually a picture of Lady Belladonna Laveau uh, on, the, on the landing page. Uh, Lady Bella is also the dean of wiccanseminary.edu, which is the only formal Wiccan-sponsored college. Uh, her book, called Awakening Spirit, is actually used by our U.S. military to help the chaplains in the military minister to Wiccan troops. Uh, and it's also part of the core curriculum of the seminary. And, um, you know, the... the there are quite a number of people who can benefit within the military from the ability of chaplains to do to do their work on the Wiccan path. So Lady Bella is a Navy veteran. She is a mother of three, and she's also a professional spiritual counselor. She's a full-time Wiccan priestess, and her ministry helps professionalize Wiccan clergy. Uh, and give resources to Wiccan ministers to help us be more effective in serving 
a modern congregation. So I want to welcome Lady Bella. And when we come back from break, you will get to hear her words about her own path and about the Aquarian Tabernacle Church. And so this is Reclaiming Your Sacred Path. I'm your host, John Anastasio. We're here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and we'll be right back. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. And welcome back to Reclaiming Your Sacred Path. I'm here with Lady Belladonna Laveau of the Aquarian Tabernacle Church, the Archpriestess of the Aquarian Tabernacle Church. And I am, uh, and if you want to call in tonight to talk with Lady Bella or with me, uh, the number is 866-451-1451. So Lady Belladonna Laveau, I am so thrilled to have you here. Welcome to Reclaiming Your Sacred Path. Thank you for having me. It's such an honor to be here. You are so welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Sure. I I think it was, you know, here I am sitting in Seattle, and normally you're sitting in Index, Washington, which is, I don't know, we're about an hour apart, and we had to go to North Carolina to meet, which was kind of funny. (laughs) Isn't that funny? (laughs) Yep, yep. And uh, so delighted to, to have met you. So, We are on a show called Reclaiming Your Sacred Path. And, you know, as the archpriestess of the church, um, you are in a leadership role, certainly in in the wider pagan community that's that's very well known. I'd love to know your story. I mean, reclaiming your your sacred path. I mean, how did you find your way to Wicca? And uh, once you were within uh, the Wiccan, you know, the Wiccan world uh, to where you are today. Let's, Let's hear. Love to hear your story. You know, I've always been a very spiritual person. I remember even when I was really little, like five years old, I would look around and wonder why the adults were doing the things that they were doing. And my my mother converted to Mormonism when I was about six, and I was very active in the church. My parents are still very active in the church. They're like head of Relief Society and head of the missionary program, so I grew up going to church every time the church was open that uh, we were there. And I developed a very close relationship with God. I went to Mormon seminary. I was a champion scripture chaser. You know, I was really into it. But as I got older and, you know, hormones started happening and you become a teenager and stuff, I just couldn't live the faith. And I Mm. got old enough to look around and see that nobody else that I knew was really living the faith either. I mean, not in private. They were in public, but not in private. And it really upset me. So uh, 
I started experiencing a lot of guilt and pulling away from God because I was embarrassed that I couldn't mm-hmm. follow the principles. And so I, I got a little bit older and I just decided that I needed to get back into praying and I started doing it and it just really wasn't working for me. And I just kept asking God to show himself to me. I got married and I was wanting to have children and I wanted to raise them in the religion and I just couldn't, I wasn't feeling it. So one day a friend of mine had gotten a fight with her boyfriend and she needed to be rescued and I went and got her and all her stuff and I brought it to my house. And she had a bunch of metaphysical books. Well, as it happens, you make up with your boyfriend and you go back home, but he just sent her a bus ticket. He didn't come get her and all her things. So she left mm-hmm. all her metaphysical books with me. And one day I read Candle at Spells by Jarena Durwich. I don't know. You probably remember that book. It was one of the seven that were out way back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I read a passage about a spell about how to meet a wizard. I didn't do the spell. I just read it. And the next mm-hmm. day I met my teacher. He walked wow. right into a metaphysical bookstore. And he said, you're the one I'm looking for, which I thought, you know, I was 21. I thought he was interested in me for other reasons. Come to find out he wanted to teach me witchcraft. He said he had a vision of me, and he told me all about how he, the goddess told him that he was going to train a priestess who was going to be a bring, be a leader in a tradition or, or something like that. And he felt like it was really important, so... I started learning witchcraft from him, and it was really amazing. And I had a a vision where I was feeling like I was walking away from God and I was doing bad things. You know, Mormonism and witchcraft Mm -hmm. don't really mix Mm -hmm. very well. So um, so Jesus appeared to me and told me that, no, I had work to do in other places and that there were plenty of people helping the Mormons and that there were other people that needed me and that I should go continue to follow my path. So with Jesus's permission, I did. <laughs> well, well, most of us don't get it directly. You know, that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty amazing. Uh, yeah. Uh, like I said, I, I was always really spiritual, very, very devout mm-hmm. in one way mm-hmm. or another, which I still am. I, I, I consider myself a bit of a zealot when it comes to spirituality. I, it just it consumes my every wake and, and sleeping moment. So I, I read every book I could. I studied all day. Like I quit my job and I went and worked in this metaphysical bookstore that this man owned. His name is Paul DeMartin. And I went and worked in the Mists of Avalon, which is interesting because I didn't know anything about the Mists of Avalon when I worked in that store. I hadn't read the book yet. Didn't realize mm-hmm. I was going to get the moon tattooed on my forehead, so that's kind of funny coincidences. But I just blossomed. It was exactly what I needed. It it helped me figure out who I was, and I just became a priestess of the goddess very quickly, and, and I learned everything that I could learn, and continued to read like for 10 years I just didn't do anything but read books my husband would sit on the couch and watch Friends and Seinfeld and I would be reading (laughs) Spiral Dance and (laughs) you know and so I read every book I could find on metaphysics and then one day the goddess in in 1999 Caridwin who's one of my first patrons said it's time for you to start doing the work that I prepared you for Mm -hmm. And she gave me a vision to start doing the work that I do and teaching and and starting a coven and all of that kind of stuff, which I had, I'd received all my degrees from my, my priest uh, way early in the, in the late eighties, early Mm nineties. And then I, opened this school called Wise Seminary because people were like, we want you to teach us, but we're in, we're, we're states away. I want your teaching. So I made, I made a school and then that's how Pete found me. Pete Ah. called me and asked me to come out to Spring Mysteries. I came out to Spring Mysteries and found the most spiritual thing I'd ever seen in my life and knew that I was home. 
That's and, awesome. Well, I need to interrupt you, uh, Lady Bella. I'm yeah. sorry, because we need to go to break. But that brings us to the perfect place to talk about Pete Pathfinder Davis and the Aquarian yeah. Tabernacle Church. And so when we come back from break, uh, love for you to continue the story to the present day. This is John Anastasio okay. here on Reclaiming Your Sacred Path. And we are on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And we'll be right back after these words. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. And welcome back to Reclaiming Your Sacred Path. I'm your host, John Anastasio, and we're here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio with Lady Belladonna Laveau. And again, if you want to call in with any questions, please give us a shout at 866-451-1451. So, Lady Bella, you were right up at the point where you moved. Now, you you, you didn't mention this, but you were in Atlanta through all of that story, right? Yes, I lived in Atlanta, and I flew to... Seattle to Spring Mysteries Festival and uh-huh. Hecate Sickle Festival twice a year for oh, almost a decade. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. So, so you came here to Index Washington for the Spring Mysteries, and just tell us a little. Well, we're going to get into the events that you, that the Aquarian Tabernacle Church runs uh, in a, in a segment in a little while. But just say a few words about the Spring Mysteries. Well, Spring Mysteries is the continuation of the Eleusinian Mysteries from Greece, from Greece, which is the longest-running ancient pilgrimage. It was like the first original passion play, and mm-hmm. it, it had a huge impact on Greek society. So they do it in uh, Washington every year at Easter weekend, and I came, and when that, I, I, I just was overwhelmed by the ability to just speak to deity. And and how the gods walk the earth at Spring Mysteries, and I just knew that I was at home, and that these people were doing what I wanted to do, but in a much better and bigger way than I was doing it. I had been doing the Eleusinian Mysteries on the East Coast, but in a way smaller, way smaller scale. And mm-hmm. I I just was enamored, and I just could not come and be around them. I had to go and experience this year after year. And, and you know, I, I, raising three children, it's not easy to get plane tickets and um, registrations and all of that kind of stuff. But the goddess always seemed to provide and make it happen <laughs> to where I could do it. And then after a while, Pete, I was running Wise Seminary. I had started my own college. It was running Wise Seminary, as I mentioned earlier. And Pete had a college but he didn't have anybody to run it. He had it state approved and he had a curriculum or a catalog, but he didn't have anybody to run it. So he asked me if I would run his school. And I, I told him that I already had a school and he said his name was better than mine. And I I disagreed that 
<laughs> I disagreed that Wollstonstein Theological Seminary was better than Y Seminary, but then he told me he had a website of wiccanseminary.edu, which is a, uh-huh. you can't get that edu extension anymore. And so he, he hooked me in. Plus, he told me I could teach whatever I wanted to as long as I called it what he, he wanted me to call it. So we made a deal. <laughs> <laughs> and I took over his school, and after after running his school successfully for several years, he and I kept asking him who was going to be the new archpriest because I wanted to make sure they liked me. I was putting a lot of energy into the school, and I didn't want it to be, you know, dissolved because the next leader didn't care for me, and I uh-huh. wanted to to make the right associations. And he said, well, I think I'm going to give it to you. And I was like, oh, goodness, Pete, I'd love to run your church, but the school is big enough for me. And mm-hmm. he was like, no, I don't have anybody else to do it, so you, you're you going to have to do it. So You're it. <laughs> I I did. <laughs> I mean, you don't really wow. turn down that kind of an opportunity. <laughs> so I, yeah, that's a- I inherited the church and all of its. It's assets. I, uh, they're not mine personally. I just inherited the caretaking of it, you know, and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it has been a wonderful ride since then. Well, the whole journey, the whole journey has been magical. Oh, so and so, you became archpriestess in when? When did that happen? Two thousand twelve. Oh wow! Awesome. That's great. Well, so that's tell what us. I say. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, it sounds like quite a ride, and and the the path clearly, you know, I, I, the way that you describe the path, sort of unfolding and and things, people and things showing up at the time they need to is really pretty amazing, and being able to be in tune enough to perceive that as well as um, as well as having it show up is 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 a great story. So tell us about, sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, you know, I just kept asking the goddess to let me serve her. I just, Mm -hmm. I love the goddess and I just want to, want to serve her. And she just kept putting more and more opportunities in my path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gratefully so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is one of the things about manifestation is when you ask for the, when you ask for the outcome of let me be of service, you may not get what you expect, but you get what you need, right? And that's exactly right. That's that's terrific. So, the Aquarian Tabernacle Church. So, tell tell us about the organization. I mean, I you know, looking at uh, as I was looking through. I mean, I, obviously, I knew about I knew I knew about the organization, but as I really sort of dug into looking at all that you're doing, um, tell us tell us about the the church and the mission and the purpose of the church and and uh, you know who the members are and, st- and all of that stuff. So Pete was raised by a lawyer. So he was a bit of a legal eagle. He knew a lot about civil rights and how to protect civil rights. And once he got the call from the goddess, he decided that we needed a couple of things as a religion. Wicca needed a couple of things. And he started trying to get a 501c3 because back then in 1979, when he started, it was really difficult to get anybody in the IRS to approve a non-Christian church to mm-hmm. as a church. So he he's known as the man with the steel spine by those who <laughs> know him well because he just he's relentless. He's like. He just keeps sending you the same request until you just don't want to get the request anymore and you approve <laughs> it to get him off your back. And that's what he did to the IRS. We have binders and binders of historical IRS documents, 1979, historical IRS documents, 1980, until he finally got a um, a Hindu woman and got a hold of his paperwork and approved it. And he was like, oh, my goodness, look at this woman's name. She's obviously not Christian. Let's ask for the 501 umbrella exemption. So he got for us an umbrella 501 exemption, which meant that we could make other Wiccan churches without them having to go and fight the IRS themselves. And In 1979, that that's just, pretty amazing. Yeah, well, I think he actually got that piece of paperwork closer to 1983 or 85, ah, okay. somewhere around in there. But okay. um, he started the fight in 79. 
Got it. So, well, Bella, Lady Bella, we're going to have to break again. I'm sorry. I, okay. Bad time. Right, right in the middle of your story, but we will come back and continue it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is Reclaiming Your Sacred Path. I'm your host, John Anastasio, and we're here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay with us. There's more to come. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. And welcome back to Reclaiming Your Sacred Path. I'm your host, John Anastasio, on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And we're here with Lady Bella Laveau from the Aquarian Tabernacle Church. And if you'd like to call in to talk with Lady Bella, please call 866-451-1451. And we, are, we were talking about the, the development of the Aquarian Tabernacle Church. And I think we left it at the 501c3. So please continue. Well, we we have the same group exemption designation as the the Catholics and the Mormons. It's a mm-hmm. very rare designation, and it's very expensive to go get it now because after we did it, they changed all the laws and made it really more expensive. Right. So you uh, you know they're like, oh, we can't let this happen again, I guess. But because of that exemption, we were able to create other five hundred one organizations, five hundred one c three organizations such as the college, the Spiral Scout, um, and then helping other pagan churches in local areas get their 501c3 designation. And and we really started out as just making sure that people could worship and do what they wanted to do without the government interference. That is Mm -hmm. the core function of the ATC, is giving people the resources they need to be more effective in their ministry. Mm-hmm. So that is that's what we do. That's that's great. And so when, when I was looking, there is it. There are twenty nine uh, ATC churches around the country. Is that true? There are twenty nine ATC churches in the United States, and then we mm-hmm. have Canada, Australia. We have some some. I think France and Italy and um, some places like that. Mm-hmm. Scotland. Um, so yeah, we have we have them all over the world. We're a worldwide organization. Mm-hmm. So so, what's it like for a uh, member to be a member of the ATC? What kinds of what kinds of what are the major uh, festivals activities that that the church sponsors? Well, we do Spring Mysteries Festival, which, like I said, is a continuation of the Eleusinian Mysteries from Greece. And that is a big, huge deal for us. It takes us four months of practicing and aspecting to do it. It's it's done in a um, state park on the coast of Washington. And 
we do Hikate Sickle at Samhain. So Easter and Samhain are our big festivals that we do. And then, of course, we do moons and Sabbaths like other local churches. We have a local church that does the regular serving the community kind of thing. We we take students and we initiate and we have a clergy, all of that kind of stuff, ordaining people um, that normal churches do. But we also have a formal seminary and a formal youth group called Spiral Scouts International. We have a newsletter and a store that we run. So we we kind of have our fingers in a lot of different pies being a worldwide organization. Pete was really good at starting things. He started a whole bunch of things. And what he found was that I'm good at picking up the started thing and making it work. I'm not so good at starting new stuff as much as I I can make what's actually going. I can troubleshoot what's wrong with it and make it work. So mm-hmm. it's kind of good that he was first and that I was second. <laughs> but um, so it, sorry, yeah, so we just try to we try to have all of these different areas because we have we have a publishing house for our writers and we have a store for our merchants. We have priests and priestesses coming up, and our job is to provide opportunities for them to have a career. So we do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like there are sort of three pillars to it. I mean, you know, you offer the direct uh, devotional and and uh, festival experience, the the direct, you know, the the direct events for people to come to to worship or to to celebrate, as as the case may be. But then you also you have the resources that you offer to Wiccan ministers and to be able to be effective in their, you know, with their groups. And then you also have the uh, WiccanSeminary.edu or the, you know, the school, uh, which is actually a college for Wiccan clergy, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. So tell us about the college. Yeah, tell us about the college. Well, so the college came about because one of our affiliate leaders, Reverend Terry Riley, went on um, one of the talk shows like Maury Povich or it wasn't Oprah, but it was something like that. And he was getting a lot of flack from his local community. He had a big drama thing. They did a documentary on it, put him on TV. And all the other people that were coming to speak out against him had Reverend in front of his name, uh, their name. And they wouldn't put Reverend in front of Terry's name. They said, Terry Riley, um, self-proclaimed witch. Uh And it did not have the legitimacy as the rest of the religions. And Pete was like, we cannot have this. What do we need? And they said, we can't, we can't put Reverend in front of your name because your religion doesn't have a seminary. And Pete was like, it will now. (laughs) He he created one. And uh, like I said, Pete was good at starting stuff, not necessarily running it. He didn't have anybody to run the school, but it was on paper and it was state recognized and it was good to go whenever he found somebody to do it. So it allowed us all, all of us, that means everybody in Wicca and the pagan religion too, to be able to legally put reverend in front of your name because WiccanSeminary.edu exists. You don't have to go. You just have to have that piece of paper that gives you leg- the legitimacy to call yourself a reverend. However, it is an incredible school, and it prepares you for working in a um, chaplain kind of like a professional mm-hmm. minister position. So once you go to our school, you can get a job at a at a college or a hospital. You can go get a job at a uh, prison to work in prison ministries. A lot of a mm-hmm. lot of people want to work in prison ministry. If you have a degree from our college and you go to any prison, they won't they will put you to work because there are none. And there's mm. so much call for wicked ministers in prison ministries and just not enough people to do it. So there's kind of a, if they say they're wicked, they get in, even though there may be a freeze on letting other ministers in the door. Mm. And and we're we're ultimately working on accrediting. We're state recognized. We're not currently accredited. There just aren't enough other colleges to have an accrediting body. But mm-hmm. now what we're finding is is that there's a lot of small local groups 
local colleges, and we are working on forms in accrediting body. We'll be able to send uh, stud- uh, students to the military to become chaplains in the military next. Wow, that's awesome. That is terrific. Well, we need to take one more break. And when we come back from this one, we will continue the conversation about the work of the Aquarian Tabernacle Church. Uh, This is John Anastasio. We're here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio on Reclaiming Your Sacred Path, talking with Lady Belladonna Laveau. And we will continue after these words. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve this stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress, plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care, or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki energy healing, or hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. And welcome back to Reclaiming Your Sacred Path. I'm your host, John Anastasio, and we're here with Lady Bella Laveau of the Aquarian Tabernacle Church, Archpriestess of the Aquarian Tabernacle Church here in Index, Washington. And she is not today in Index, Washington, and uh, there's a reason for that. So, Lady Bella, where are you actually physically located today? I am somewhere between Washington, D.C. and Baltimore, Maryland, or Yeah, Baltimore, Maryland. (laughs) We are um, headed across the United States to do the World Love Tour. So, and that's where what you were doing when I saw you this weekend in North Carolina, right? Mm Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. So, what's the tour about? So this year, I had the rare privilege of holding, being the vessel for Demeter at Spring Mysteries Festival. And the ATC works very deeply with the Eleusinian gods. We hold them for a whole year. And when Demeter was passed to me from the previous priestess, she had a lot to say. And she Mm -hmm. spent about four months just talking to me about her concerns about the planet and how she wants to help mankind learn how to get through this next age that that is happening for us. She's very concerned about the food that we're eating and the amount of poisons that we're having to deal with in our environment and the the high rate of cancer and sickness and mental health issues and all of those things. So she asked me um, to go on a tour and tell everybody her message. It, interestingly enough, Dusty had been talking about doing the World Love Tour for about a year, and we were like, whatever, Dusty, I don't even know what that's about. Why do you keep coming up with that? And he's like, I don't know, but I've even got an <laughs> idea of a T-shirt and stuff. So, so when, it came out, <laughs> when it came out that she asked us to do that, I was like, well, here you go, Dusty. This is what she's been telling you. And so he got all excited. We we both got really excited. We started calling our friends across the United States and asking who wanted to host Demeter while she shared her special message. 
mm-hmm. for um, for health, wealth, and prosperity for her children. And mm-hmm. we we got a lot of responses. We have 20 stops. We've done four already, and we are now headed to New Aeon Bookstore in Salem, Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. And we will be doing one there this Friday, and then we will hit Brewer, Maine on Saturday, and then we'll be coming back to um, Tennessee and Georgia to go to Pagan Unity Festival, and we have a couple of in- things to do in Georgia, and then, you know, on to Florida. It's a lot of stops. I'm very excited. It has been a really blessed trip, a lot of magic, a lot of Demeter telling me what to do. She's very insistent. Um and and it's really awesome because you know I'm a tarot reader. I, I am not a uh, agriculturalist, or I'm not into sustainable. I mean, I am into sustainable communities. It's just not what I know about. I don't know about organic farming. I eat organic, but I don't know how to do it. And uh-huh. <laughs> um, we we've, we've been going around doing this stuff, and Demeter speaks through me and she talks to people and tells them her message. And then they come up to me afterwards asking me questions about gardening and stuff like that. And I'm like, Whoa, I don't know anything (laughs) about this. You're talking to Bella now. It's a whole different person, but um, it is, it is so awesome. People are really ready to receive this. She says her message and I, I look at the faces of the people and they're like, yeah, yeah, we do it. Okay, let's get on it. But she she told me that she has been having her priests and priestesses shouting her message from the rooftop and her children just aren't listening. So she's going around in person telling people herself her special message and how to do what she needs them to do and the magic behind it and and making making promises to them that if they do what she asks she will provide for them. And it's just really humbling to watch her magic work and to get to be a part of it and to see the reception that we are receiving from people, the uh, opening their hearts and minds at homes and, and helping support the project as we go across the United States and uh, you know, the Great Mother provides for all, and I was really worried that we wouldn't be able to afford to do this, but she's mm-hmm. just she's provided for our needs. It's a beautiful experience. It's really exciting. It's a powerful message. It's important. She's called to her children to come and see her, and mm-hmm. and they are. They're responding. Well, and and you do you run each meeting the way that you did the ritual at at the illustration this weekend? Is that pretty much how it goes? It's pretty much how it goes. You know, it's a little bit different with each one, but that's pretty much what happens. Yeah. Well, because, you know, I mean, I will obviously I was there for it and I was a participant in it. And, um, you know, there are many people, all of us were there who were there participated. And uh, I will tell you the experience of. Lady Bella bringing through Demeter is extraordinary, and it's it's life changing. And in the terms uh, that a course in miracles uses, that a miracle is a change in perception. You don't see the world the same way after. This is one of those experiences. And so, if you're in Salem or you know in Maine or in any of the upcoming stops, seriously, this is a personal testimonial that it was an it was an amazing experience. So, and I want to thank you again for that. Lady Bella, that was terrific. Thank that you was so terrific. much, John. You you can look up on Facebook. You can look up hashtag World Love Tour on Facebook, mm-hmm. and it'll bring up all of the different places where we're going to be. Great. That's terrific. So that was hashtag World Love Tour? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, great. And I'm so, I'm so glad that she was able to talk to you, John. That, that means a lot. <laughs> uh, I wasn't the only one, trust me. And uh, thank you. yes, thank you. But thank you. Thank you for, for being there. So, so the other thing, as I, as I look at your website, I'm seeing this countdown timer here. It's right now at 169 minutes and 20 seconds. And uh, I am sorry, 169 days, 20 hours, 13 minutes and 
35 seconds. And I'm going to tell everybody to go to atcwicca.org to find out what that timer is all about, because that is the fall <laughs> festival called Hecate's Sickle Festival in Washington State. Yeah. This is John Anastasio. Yeah. We're here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And this is Reclaiming Your Sacred Path. And we'll be right back. There are artists, and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History and the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Les Colde Beaux Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.BetterHomeAndGarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor covering, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. And welcome back to Reclaiming Your Sacred Path. This is John Anastasio. I'm your host, and we are on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And we have been talking for the last uh, too short of an hour, too short period of time with Lady Belladonna Laveau. Uh, and Lady Bella, I just want to thank you for being here tonight. It has I have loved this conversation, and I'm sure that our listeners have gotten a ton out of it. And I just want to thank you for your time. John, thank you so much for having me. It, it's a privilege to be able to come and talk to you. It was such an honor to meet you, and I'm so glad that you're in my neck of the woods because I'm going to be visiting you often. <laughs> and I know where to find you guys, that's for sure. So the, um, the good, I look forward to it. I absolutely look forward to it, especially Thank when you. you're in the yeah, especially when you're in the middle of this tour. Uh, I very much appreciate you taking the time to be with to be with me to be with us on this show. So, any any last thoughts for people? Anything you'd like to leave? Yeah. Any message you'd like to leave people with? You know, you just have to remember that be the change that you seek. Change comes from within. It's not what's happening to you. It's what you're doing about it. Love that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you again. And I definitely look forward to seeing you. And I wish you nothing but joy on the, the World Love Tour. Um, and you mentioned Dusty, who is the summiter of the... Uh, Aquarian Tabernacle Church, and also your husband, yeah? Mm hmm yes. And, and so I wish you both, please give him my regards and give him all of our regards. Those, I'm sure we're, those, all those listening who've met him would, would love to, for you to do that. And thank you so much for being here again and, uh, and all the best on the rest of the tour. Thank you for having me, blessed be. Blessed be. All right. So, let me update you a little bit. So those of you who know uh, who know me, uh, I am 
I have a healing practice here in Seattle I call Center for Power and Healing, and I offer Reiki energy healing and shamanic healing and also what I call sacred journey healing, which is a combination of using divination to get wisdom for how the energy can support you before we set about doing Reiki healing. And so to find me and more about that, you go to www.powerandhealing.com and you can reach me at john, J-O-N, at powerandhealing.com. Again, you can reach uh, Lady Bella at um, the atcwicca.org website. There are multiple ways to contact her and find out more about all of the many things that the ATC is doing. Uh, If you go to my website, uh, powerandhealing.com, you'll see an opportunity to download a free chapter of my book, the one that talks about managing your energy to uh, maintain your energy, to maintain your resilience energetically through Uh, clearing and releasing excess energy and calling in uh, the universal life energy that we are all surrounded by in a way that will replenish and help you. So you'll see that link, free chapter for radio listeners, and it'll take you to a contact form. And if you send that, you'll also get a meditation to connect you with your higher self. Um, I am at Stargazers in Bellevue, Washington tomorrow. I'm offering Reiki healing from 11 to 5. And I am also offering two workshops in May on the Wiccan path, two introductory workshops, one on Friday, May 11th, and that's from 7 to 9 p.m. at Stargazers in Bellevue, and another on May 20th from 12 to 3 p.m. I'm partnering with a colleague named Mara Lynn, who is a priestess who lives in, a high priestess who lives in uh, a little bit east of Seattle, Washington. And the two of us are going to be conducting those two workshops. And so if you're interested in that, you can contact Stargazers or contact me. I am so happy that Lady Bella was with us tonight. Um, I've had a wonderful time with this conversation. And this is John Anastasio on Reclaiming Your Sacred Path. BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio is our location. And I want to wish you all a very blessed evening and a most blessed Beltane. You've been listening to Reclaiming Your Sacred Path with your host, John Anastasio. Join us each week as Reclaiming Your Sacred Path will provide you with your opportunity to strengthen your connection with who you really are on John Anastasio's Reclaiming Your Sacred Path. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.